Welcome to the Hatch Act. This mandatory training covers the expectations for ethical conduct and the legal restrictions on political activity for federal employees. Ethical conduct means being willing to choose the harder virtue over the easier vice. We must all lead by example. As federal employees, we are responsible for abiding by the statutory requirements of the Hatch Act, which governs permissible and prohibited political activity. Additional guidance can be found in OSD's Guidance on Political Activity and DOD Support 2020, DOD Directive 1344.10, as well as 2020 Public Affairs Guidance. Partisan political activity is defined as any activity directed toward the success or failure of a political party, partisan political group, or candidate for partisan political office. Civilian employees are divided into two categories, further restricted and less restricted. Military personnel are governed by DOD Directive 1344.10, political activities by members of the armed forces, Rules are substantially similar to further restricted employees. Some activities are not considered political activities, so federal employees may engage in them. They include discussing legislation, ballot initiatives, and nonpartisan elections, discussing issues, and attending an issue march or rally. The key is that the activity does not include showing support or opposition to a political party or candidate for political office. Most of us are considered less restricted employees. Career SES members are further restricted employees to whom more stringent rules apply. This briefing will focus on less restricted employees. Less restricted employees may actively participate in partisan political management and campaigns, subject to the prohibitions of the Hatch Act. Further restricted employees are subject to additional restrictions regarding the active participation in partisan political management and campaigns. There are separate rules for military personnel. DOD Directive 1344.10, Political Activities by Members of the Armed Forces, lays out those rules. Members on active duty should not engage in partisan political activity, and members not on active duty should avoid inferences that their political activities imply or appear to imply official sponsorship, approval, or endorsement. Military members may not wear their uniform during political activities. You may not engage in any political activity at work. This includes teleworking, and the rule applies even if using your own personal device. Remember, on your own time, on your own dime, on your own device, and not in a federal building or wearing a federal badge or uniform. Prohibitions while on duty include wearing political buttons, t-shirts, screensavers, posters, etc. You may not email, text, or use social media on political activities while on duty and in the workplace, including your telework location. The Hatch Act prohibits employees from displaying photos of candidates for partisan public office in a federal building. There are two exceptions. The official photo of the president may be displayed, even if the president is a candidate. For instance, our chain of command posters are permissible. Remember that only the official presidential photo may be used. A photo from a magazine is not official. The second exception applies to a photo where you and the president are included. The photo must have been on display prior to election season and must not have been taken at a campaign event or other type of partisan political event. All employees may vote, be a member of a political party, be a member of a political club, display a single bumper sticker on your personal vehicle, and place a campaign sign in the yard of your personal residence 
unless, of course, you are living on post. All employees may be candidates for public office in nonpartisan elections, campaign for or against referendum questions, constitutional amendments or municipal ordinances, and sign nominating petitions. All employees may contribute money to political parties, campaigns, or partisan groups. But remember, on your own time, in your own space, and on your own device. All employees may express personal opinions, absent any connection to DOD, about candidates and issues. All employees may attend a political event. However, further restricted employees may not actively participate. Um, for example, they may not participate in partisan policy planning or political strategy sessions. All employees may use social media to express an opinion about a partisan group or candidate while they are off duty, away from the workplace, and on their own device. However, further restricted employees and military personnel have additional restrictions. Further restricted employees may not post to or link to campaign or partisan material of a partisan candidate or group. They may not share these entities' Facebook pages or content, and they may not retweet posts from these entities' Twitter accounts. For further restricted employees, including the military, Sharing or retweeting Facebook or Twitter feeds from a political campaign, candidate, or group is like distributing campaign lead. Linking to a campaign disseminates the link and is also similar to distributing literature. All employees are prohibited from asking for political contributions. This includes sharing links or social media that solicits political contributions. Employees are also prohibited from using a social media account in an official capacity to engage in political activity. Employees are prohibited from engaging in political activity via social media while on duty or in the workplace. So don't hit the like button while you're at work. Employees may not send or forward political emails or post political messages to social media while in a federal building, even when off duty, even on your own device. Remember, everything must apply. On your own time, in your own space, on your own device. You must never use government equipment to engage in political activities. And you can't engage in political fundraising, ever. Less restricted employees, as long as they are not on duty or in the workplace, may also circulate nominating petitions, work as campaign volunteers, distribute campaign literature, organize campaign events, and speak on behalf of a candidate. Less restricted employees may hold party office, serve as delegate to a party convention, organize party events, or serve on a party committee. Further restricted employees may not actively participate in political management or political campaigning. The rule is that they may not act in concert with or on behalf of a political party, candidate for partisan office, or partisan group. Further restricted employees may not volunteer for a partisan campaign, hold party office or serve on a party committee, forward campaign or political party emails, use social media pages to share um, the post of a political party, partisan political group, or candidate for partisan political office, and they may not serve as a poll worker. Participation in public demonstrations or vigils is not considered a political activity unless it is organized or conducted in support of a partisan group or political party. But remember, DOD civilians should not officially endorse or create an appearance of officially endorsing non-federal entities or groups. Participation in public demonstrations, vigils, marches, social gatherings, and similar events must be conducted in a personal capacity during off-duty hours or in a leave status. 
in publicly expressing their personal view or opinion, you should make it clear that you do not represent the official position of the Department of Defense or this organization. The penalties for violating the Hatch Act are serious. The Merit Systems Protection Board may order removal, reduction in grade, debarment from federal employment for a period up to five years, suspension, reprimand, or a civil penalty up to $1,000. Here's a summary of do's and don'ts. Remember to think before you post. Let's look at a few scenarios that might arise under the Hatch Act. Scenario 1. A contracting employee has several photos of the sitting president who is running for re-election in their office. The photos include a life-size cardboard cutout of the sitting president, a photo that has been in the employee's office for five years showing the employee together with the sitting president at the employee's cousin's wedding, a photo of the sitting president meeting with the head of state, i.e. conducting official business, a campaign photo of the sitting president signing a treaty, i.e. conducting official business, a photo of the sitting president from a magazine, and an official photo of the sitting president in the federal building is right outside the employee's office space. In addition, the employee has a partisan mug or cup, hat, t-shirt, screensaver, and an elephant or a donkey in the office space. Meanwhile, CNN or Fox News is on in the corridor discussing the upcoming partisan political election. Let's go over which photos and other items may be displayed and why. The cardboard cutout is a firm no. And nope, it doesn't matter if the cardboard cutout isn't visible when the door is closed. The photo from the cousin's wedding is okay because it's a reflection of the personal relationship between the employee and the president, and it also predates the president's term in office. The photo of the sitting president meeting with the head of state, i.e. conducting official business, is permissible. However, a campaign photo of the sitting president conducting official business is not permissible. If the campaign uses it, you can't display it. A magazine photo of a sitting president may not be displayed. The official photo of the sitting president in the federal building may be displayed. Parts and mugs, cups, hats, t-shirts, screensavers may not be displayed. However, it's a little bit more complicated when it comes to an elephant or a donkey. The big question is, is the elephant or donkey in political guard? Is it, say, a blue donkey and a red elephant? That probably is not permissible. However, if it's clearly an apolitical donkey or elephant, that's okay. Um, CNN or Fox News is not a Hatch Act issue you can listen to the news, including political coverage. Scenario two, small business employee is on duty in the federal workplace, wearing a government uniform or badge. At lunch, when not on duty, he or she is at his or her desk, talking to a group of federal coworkers who are all also at lunch and not on duty. All are advocating for one or more candidates in the upcoming partisan political election. Does the rule prohibiting partisan political activities in the workplace, no political activity while on duty, in the federal workplace, wearing a government uniform or badge, or using a government vehicle allow this activity? The answer is no. Remember, on your own time, in your own space, not wearing any government uniforms, badges, or other symbol, and not using a government vehicle. And of course, use your own device. What about if an employee is sending partisan political emails to friends from his or her personal device or account while working in the federal workplace? That's a no, because the employee is in the federal workplace and on duty. What about if the employee is teleworking at home 
and sits at home talking on the phone with friends during lunch when he or she is not on duty and advocates for a particular candidate in the upcoming election. That's okay, provided that the employee is using his or her own phone. Remember, you can't use government equipment for partisan political activity. What about if the employee is teleworking at home and sits at home talking on the phones with friends during the workday and advocates for a particular candidate in the upcoming election? That is not permissible because the employee is on duty. Remember, partisan political activity must be done on your own time, on your own dime, in your own space, and on your own device. What about if the employee is teleworking at home and has a work video conference where a partisan political sign behind him or her is visible during the call? That's not permissible because the employee is working. You can't display partisan political signs while you're on duty, and that includes being on duty in a virtual environment. What about if the employee leaves the workplace, the federal building or the telework location, puts their federal badge in their pocket, goes to meet friends for lunch, and advocates for a particular partisan candidate in the upcoming election? That's okay, just make sure that you are all the way out of the federal building. You can't sit around in the cafeteria of the federal building and advocate for a particular partisan candidate. What about if the employee is on duty, wearing a government badge, and in a government vehicle, talking either on the phone or with other people in the vehicle advocating for a particular partisan candidate in the upcoming election? That's not okay. The employee is on duty, so they are not on their own time. They are in a government vehicle, so they're not in their own space, and they are obviously using government equipment, and they're wearing their government badge. Um, moreover, you shouldn't ever be talking on the phone while you're driving. Scenario three. An engineering employee is inspired about the upcoming partisan political elections and wants to be involved. The employee decides that he or she should participate by asking for political contributions for a partisan candidate on personal time. Is that okay? No, you can't ever ask for political contributions for a partisan candidate while you are a federal employee, even on your own time. But what if the employee would like to distribute campaign literature? Is that okay? For less restricted employees, that is permissible under the Hatch Act. You can volunteer. For further restricted employees, you can't. If the employee is an SES or military service member, does that matter? It certainly does. An SES employee is further restricted and can't distribute campaign literature nor can a military service member. Scenario three continued. The only computer the employee can get to work is his government computer. So on his or her personal time, may he or she use his or her government computer to make a partisan political contribution? The answer is no, because government equipment can't be used for partisan political activity. Remember, on your own device. The employee goes to his or her federal building and parks in the government lot with a partisan political bumper sticker on his or her personal vehicle. Is there any problem with that? No, that's not a problem, but you are limited to one partisan political bumper sticker per candidate on your personal vehicle. An employee is meeting with his or her friend who is in the military. The plan is to go to a partisan political activity together but his or her military friend is running late and will not have time to change out of uniform. Is there any problem with the military friend attending in uniform? Does it matter if it is covered by the media? The answer is yes, there is a problem with the military friend attending in uniform. You can't attend a partisan political activity in uniform. And no, it doesn't matter if it's covered by the media or not. Scenario four, 
An attorney employee plans to attend an upcoming Black Lives Matter protest. Are there any restrictions? Attending a Black Lives Matter protest or other issue protest is not a Hatch Act issue. Employees may attend in a personal capacity, which means no government apparel or badge, during off-duty hours and do not give the appearance of DOD endorsement. Make it clear that you don't represent the DOD. Military service members are subject to additional limitations. Please consult with the ethics counselor. An employee plans to vote in the upcoming partisan political election and make a personal political contribution to a candidate when not on duty. Voting is of course allowed. Making the personal political contribution when not on duty is also allowed. Just be sure to use your own device. An employee is also interested in working as a campaign volunteer when not on duty. Less restricted employees are allowed to work as political campaign volunteers. Further restricted employees are not allowed to do this. Scenario five, planning employee loves social media. The employee tweets and friends and follows as much as he or she can. For the upcoming partisan political election, employee uses social media to follow and support his or her favorite partisan political candidates. The employee finds it hard to stop using social media, even when at work, but he or she heard there are rules for what is allowed when on duty. In what social media activities may the employee participate and when? May the employee use social media in an official capacity for partisan political activities? No, you may not use social media in an official capacity for partisan political activities. All may post, like, share, tweet, retweet, befriend, or follow a partisan candidate while off-duty, away from the workplace, on their personal device, and not inside a federal building, as long as they are doing this in their personal capacity. What about using social media for political fundraising? No, federal employees may not engage in political fundraising even when they are off-duty. What if the employee is an SES or a military service member? Are there any additional restrictions? Yes, further restricted employees and members of the military may not post or link to campaign or partisan material or share such Facebook pages or content or retweet posts from these entities' Twitter accounts. If you have any questions about complying with the Hatch Act, please feel free to reach out to one of our ethics counselors.